Welcome back, hodlers. Today, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and Cardano, exactly what's going to happen in the near term. Obviously, we've kind of gone on a bit of an upswing, but I want people to be very, very cautious at this swing at this point. So we see that we did go down to our resistance line of 32,000. We did drop under, as you saw in the video yesterday, and now we have made it above. Now, the reason why I want to stress caution is because often this could just be a bounce realistically what could happen is we're probably going to get rejected at some point and then end up going to the downturn you can't really expect this to get out of this channel at this point in the game we are way too bearish to see a bitcoin pump above and just get out of here i know there's a lot of people that think it's going to get out of here and i think every time we see this every single time we go down we have a nice big girthy candle coming up and then afterwards we go right back down and that's just what's going to happen we're we're going to get lower highs and lower lows. So at this point, we are on a downtrend. Now, again, I'm not going to beat on a dead horse with this, but we could go down below the sub 30,000 mark. Definitely trade within that level over and down in here. But like I said, this is probably just be an extended accumulation period. Now, considering where we are, we're not going to be here for a little bit. We're not just going to pump out of this and regain everything. We're going to be trading this way for a little while. Now we may go down for a little bit, may go sub 25 K. If we do go something that low at that point, I think we will rebound above, you know, at some point there is a lot of support going down below the 32 K. We have a lot of support around 23 and then as well, you know, even below then. Um, so there's still a lot of support lines. So I wouldn't be too, too terribly worried. But the reality is, could we see a Bitcoin that goes below 30K and even sub 25K? I think it's in the cards. I don't think it is outside of the realm of possibility. But like I said, it's just a very good buying opportunity to get in. There's a lot of FUD going around. Now, you could say this candle is maybe from El Salvador News. I really don't think so. I, El Salvador News came out basically over the weekend, right? We all knew that the bill was coming. So I don't think that this pump, this measly little pump is... El Salvador news. What I think has happened here is that a lot of people have scooped up Bitcoin at its low and pumped it up. But the things that we do know right now is that there's a lot of shorting pressure on Bitcoin. A lot of people betting that Bitcoin is going to go down in the near term. And when there is that much pressure on Bitcoin, it very easily could tumble. And if it does tumble below the 32,000 mark and get sub 30K, if we do breach this zone here, then we absolutely could tumble further and possibly even retest the low 20Ks. I don't think we would get any further than maybe 23, 24K. I'd probably say my bet is actually more the 26, 27. But I think the big thing that I'm trying to say here, expect some low Bitcoin numbers in the coming future. It's going to get rough before it gets better, but it will get better, I promise. So it's just about keeping your head about you, hodling on, don't worry about the FUD, don't worry about anything else, just keep buying, keep making a yield in DeFi, don't worry about it. But we often talk about Bitcoin because it's so tied to the crypto market cap. But the current market is currently at $1.57 trillion. The market cap alone is doing pretty well. That doesn't mean that we can't go down further. I absolutely think we could go down further. Maybe test down to the 1 trillion mark. Maybe see if we can break that 1 trillion and go a little bit lower. Now, if we do for the total altcoin market cap, I think it will just be temporary. Uh, right now, we do see a lot of support for a lot of altcoins, way more than Bitcoin because Bitcoin is just getting FUD every other day, every other weekend. It's It's been crazy over the last couple of months with all this FUD with Bitcoin. But I would say at this point, we could expect at least a little bit of stability from altcoins and cryptocurrencies in total. Uh, one being uh, Ethereum. Now, Ethereum has pumped a little bit or held a little bit onto its value at $2,500, 2562 essentially. Um, but we do know that a couple of things are coming out. Now, I don't want to spread FUD and I'm not spreading FUD because delays are so common with every project, including Ethereum. If people said that they actually expected Ethereum in 2021, uh, that's something wrong. I got a bridge to sell you on that one. Ethereum, uh, Vitalik specifically said that it's most likely that we will see Ethereum uh, 2.0 in 2022, which makes sense at this point. And again, that's why I'm not upset about us trading in a bearish trend for an extended period of time. We know that Cardano is really not done. And we're going to be talking about Cardano next, I promise you. We know ETH isn't done. Polkadot isn't done. The parachains are coming alive. Actually, KSM parachains went off pretty successfully. So all of this stuff is still a big work in progress. So is it the worst when the crypto market cap is trading downwards 
for an extended period of time while a lot of those updates come and are coming while we get very, very bullish. So I'm totally okay with an accumulation phase to buy more cryptocurrency. And that's exactly the idea that you should be taking. I said in my last video that I'm most likely changing my cash out structure. I'm probably not going to cash out any cryptocurrency in 2021 other than moving things into DeFi and making taxable events through DeFi. And then in 2022, look at actually taking profits from capital gains in a lot of my cryptocurrencies. But right now that's not in the cards. I don't expect it to be in the cards anytime this year uh, and definitely not in the summer. I think in this summer, we are definitely going to have a summer lull. Speaking of summer lulls, I do have a vacation coming up. So we may see a little bit of a summer lull for the channel. I will still post, but uh, just not as often. But that's only going to be for a week and a half. So let's talk about Cardano. We've held strong at our $1.50 mark. I think at this point, Cardano has shown its strength at this level. Now, does that mean if Bitcoin goes down that we're going to hold this line? I dramatically don't think so. I absolutely think if Bitcoin and the crypto market cap does go down, we are going to lose this dollar fifty. However, I do think if we do lose this dollar fifty, it's going to be a temporary setback, maybe a week, maybe a day, whatever it may be. We may even just get one of these wicks, one of these uh, bad boys down here. We may get something like that really dipping down. Uh, but really, I'm not terribly worried about where Cardano is going in the near term. Now, you could also go on Binance and set limit orders and basically buy at those levels. I would look at these candles, see the trend. So obviously we're trending up a little bit. So maybe the candle wouldn't be nearly as low if we do wick down that that area. So maybe go off of that and judge, okay, where do I want to put my Cardano buy, uh, buy order? And then at that point you can say, all right, I'd probably say, you know, Cardano could potentially hit around this level. That's $1.22. So maybe you put your buy order at around that level at $1.22. So that's just an example of how you might be able to judge where to put a buy order. But that would be something that you would put in like overnight if you're expecting like a bearish trend. So watch the charts. And if you do see something where we are going down in Bitcoin, maybe it's smart to put in a buy order and go to bed. But also, if you're watching these videos, you should be a hodler. I'd hope that you're a hodler. Some of you are traders, and I understand that, and that's fine if you're swing trading with a little bit of your portfolio. But most people are hodlers, and the main thing that you need to understand is hodl. Hodl and make an income through DeFi channels, whether that be uh, Polygon, Matic, whether it be PokeSwap, whether it be Binance Chain, BSC. I'm, I'm on like basically every DeFi platform right now. I'm earning a yield on tons of other platforms. I'm earning PSwap every day. My Vesta rewards are being held there. I'm waiting for them to unlock and eventually be given to me once the developers update the PSwap system. There's DeFi and I'm in the DeFi Matic pool. So I'm earning DeFi at a 455% rate. But I don't want to ramble on too much about this because that's a whole nother topic for another video that's coming out tomorrow. But to finish off my assessment on Cardano, obviously we are going to continue our boring price action with Cardano. We are probably going to wick really down if uh, the Bitcoin and everything, you know, tumbles. So if we do see a drop in the crypto market, of course, expect Cardano to go down. Uh, but definitely look at it as a buying opportunity. Stake your Cardano on uh, Daedalus and earn a yield. And that's that's basically it. So um, I, I think everyone that holds Cardano is pretty happy. So it is what it is. KSM has shot up. No doubt that this is due to the big news with the parachain auction, the successful auction that KSM conducted. So it's good to see KSM making the strides and making the excitement build for the polka dot parachains. I'm super excited where all of this is going to go. I think we're just at the beginning, especially for KSM, especially for polka dot. I'm super excited. I am upset that polka dot isn't really doing that well. It's at $22 right now, but KSM is at $467. So hats off to KSM. Really happy about the game there. And I'm excited to see where KSM is going to go in the near term and in the long term. You guys all know that I'm hugely bullish on KSM. I own a lot of KSM. I, I love KSM. But to wrap up the video, the current market cap is currently at $1.66 trillion according to CoinGecko. Bitcoin is at 36453 Ethereum sitting strong at 2572 It's far from its all-time high, but definitely still holding a lot of value from when it previously pumped. So it's good to see Ethereum at that price. Still shows me that there's still a lot of bulls in the space regardless of the shorting pressure on Bitcoin. We do have Binance coins still struggling around the $368 mark, 
But I would say Binance Coin is an incredible buy because I still think that we can absolutely see that 700 uh, Binance Coin very easily. So just buying Binance Coin here is almost 100% gain. Cardano holding strong at around $1.50, $1.60 zone. Uh, so doing very well. Uh, XRP is struggling to make its way back up to $1 at $0.88. Cents, so currently down 12% on the seven day. We have Polkadot that's been just struggling in general, I feel. It hasn't really performed that well. I am expecting eventually that Polkadot is going to outperform a lot of my cryptocurrencies. So I'm just holding and then taking the opportunity to accumulate a little bit more Polkadot and build up my bags. So it is what it is at this point. I'm happy to buy more Polkadot at this price. Absolutely fine with it. But if it does go lower, I will absolutely be stealing any Polkadot below $20. So just to end this all off, finish it up with Bitcoin. Obviously, again, I would take this pump. Be cautiously optimistic about it. Sure, we could absolutely just be fine. Everything could be okay. But I'm saying that the likelihood is that we'll most likely end up going down from here. If you do like the content, go ahead and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel for more crypto news and content. And of course, happy hodling and hodl strong.